What was going through your head when you took that shot at the end of the fourth quarter? Oh uh, shit, about damn time. <laughs> I finally hit a shot. Um, you know, I just wanted to just continue to shoot. You know, I knew that, you know, I'm always um, in the mentality of get rich, die trying. So, you know, if you, um, you know, miss 10, keep shooting, eventually it'll fall. You trust it. And I put a lot of work in and just believed in my jump shot and uh, finally just paid off for me at the right time. When you left your hands, did you know it was good? Um, that one, I knew that was good. Yeah, well, only that one though. That's about it. Who's the final play of time? Was Taj the folks? Where was the only option? The final when he shot the ball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, it's always it's always about at the end of the game, you know, finding the best shot, you know. And he caught the ball. He was right in the middle of their zone. Turned around. I mean, I thought it was good. It was a great shot. Mr. May. Um, Taj came in and I mean, Taj really won the game. Obviously, you know, you know, hit the shot, not there, whatever, but Taj coming in the game really just changed it because we, we were in a point where they were getting offensive rebounds and with the lineup that they have, had out there, it was a little bit easier to play Taj and, and KP out there at the same time. And it paid off. Didn't score, but had eight rebounds and Huge defensive stops, too. Can you explain to me why it was easier against the press to play Taj with the Well, just the lineup that they had out there. I think they had Robinson. He was out there, so it was easy for KP to guard. And then Highsmith, you know, he's kind of a, he's more like a four man. So Taj could be out there and guard him. And, um, you know, just paid off right time. And Wes made a great adjustment and um, helped us win the game. Kyle, because. Because you guys were playing against a team that only had seven guys, do you think that the game shouldn't have been as close as it was? Well, these games are trap games. These games are harder than the regular games, you know, from a standpoint of, you saw it with us in Dallas, right? You know, when you don't have your, your best couple players, it gives everybody else, you know, just less pressure on their shoulders just to go out and just hoop and just do whatever. And I mean, you, you see how tough it is to win in this league. And everybody in this league is talented. They didn't have Jimmy, they didn't have Bam, they didn't have Tyler, Tyler Hero. Hero, probably Gabe Vincent, some other guys, Oladipo. But those guys, they come in, they play hard, they make shots, and they gave us a run for our money. Uh, how'd you guys figure out the zone defense? It seemed like they'd get us trouble until like the fourth quarter. What was the key to solving that outside of shooting? Well, M Miami's an interesting team. You know, they're third in the league in defense uh, with no rim protection. It's it's really honestly phenomenal how <laughs> Spo just does a great job of just squeezing the entire lemonade out of every roster he's ever really had, and he does a great job of just you know teaching these guys. You know that zone and and how to just operate within it so it's very tough because it's, it's unorthodox and only you know maybe two teams actually really play consistent zone really only them so it's really tough when you don't really prepare for it that much but we got a great look at it and then we play them in a week back to back so you know this is a great time for us to look at this film and how we can be better So Kyle, the first one is, uh, just what did you see from a mental toughness aspect from the team tonight? Uh, great mental toughness, you know. KP shot wasn't falling, so what? Go get 18 rebounds. Uh, myself, Ari said it. Um, Brad, first half was kind of a little slow and just really picked us up in the second half and really helped us get over the hump by making key plays in the shot making. And, um, you know, Taj as well. You see a guy, you know, he does not play at all. He's not in the rotation. And coach throws him in. He's an awesome and professional. He gets in and, and wins us the game. So it's a lot of mental toughness. And, and we got down a little bit. I, I don't know how much we got down, maybe 14 or 15 at one point. But um, we just did a phenomenal job of just, just clicking away, chopping the wood, and it prevailed for us. I also want to ask you, you were zero, Westbrook was zero, but the respect for Gilbert tonight, you guys didn't wear that number. Just as a, uh, 
as a testament to Gilbert, just what does he mean to you that, you know, it's almost like unofficially retired that he, nobody will probably will ever wear that number again. Uh, yeah, and I was pissed because I wanted to wear his zero too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Gil's my man. He's, he, he's, he's great. He's, he's a uh, comedian. He's a great person. Um, really, really loves the game of basketball. And it shows you how much he did here, you know, for a guy like Russell Westbrook to come here, a Hall of Fame player, a better player than he, he, he was, right? And to just respect the head, you are age zero. And growing up, you know, Gil's one of my favorite players. You know, I remember the, was it the 60 he had in, uh, in L.A., in those uh, gold jerseys. It was, you know, he was big time. He, he, was, a, he was a menace. So. Do you want them to bring back the gold jersey? Oh man, I was pleading for it. I love those. I think those are good for sure. But these ones we got are by far the best, but it's got to come next. Good evening. Uh, What's up? Also, well, first off, congratulations on the victory. And of course, I'd like to ask, what do you think played the biggest role in the team's comeback of sorts that took place, or rather the shift in the momentum that took place through the third and fourth quarters? I mean, Corey Kisper came in. He hit a lot of big shots in, in the second half. You know, made a string of threes. Um, you know, I think it was the little run where, you know, Monte got down and he had the right hand layup. If they call it a timeout, that really, really helped. And, you know, we just stayed with it. We just stayed with it. And uh, we got stops at the end, you know, because at the end of the game, they they kind of struggled for the last five, six minutes over time to really score. And, um, you know, you'll take a hug to win because a win is a win. Of course. Sure. And in addition, I'd also like to ask, what do you also what do you also think played the largest role in overcoming the adversity? Because I noticed in the beginning of the game there was some difficulty in overcoming Miami's defense in the paint and of course that limited some of the high percentage shots you could have taken in the paint. So if you if you could like uh, what do you think played a bigger role in of, of overcoming that adversity? I think just understanding what they were trying to do and how we can combat it. I think in the first half <clears throat> It was just really foreign to us. It was really new, and you know it's kind of tough somehow to play against that zone because when you catch the ball in the middle, you're just naked open. It feels a little weird, um, but we stuck with it. We rebounded down the stretch. We got stops, and all that was all key. And it was it was definitely a team win. So how did you guys flip the script uh, defensively at halftime? Uh, first one, praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and Coach lit a little fire up on us at halftime. Uh, and kind of got, in, got into our grill a little bit. Um, and we, we knew we had to be better. We, we, weren't, we weren't defending at all uh, the way we knew we were capable of. Uh, okay, we gave up like a, almost like a 40 point quarter, first and second quarter. It's just one us, you know? They were, they were pushing and attacking. Didn't matter who was on the floor for them. All things we knew before the game, we came out of our heels, but we did a good job. Coach led us up at half. We came out and responded. What did uh, the boost that Todd Simpson gave you guys mean to the team? Uh, it was awesome, man, because, you know, Todd is, Todd is our OG. You know, he keeps everybody engaged, locked into the game. Uh, he makes sure that guys are on the bench are ready to go when they come in. Uh, and, I mean, that's it was a testament to what he preaches, you know, him just being ready tonight, you know. Um, true vet, great screener. Uh, just played the game the right way. You know, he was everywhere actively, defensively on the boards. Um, just making the right plays, man. And, you know, it was good to be able to have him out there. What's up, Dale? Uh, first one for you is, what did you see from a mental toughness aspect from the team tonight? Well, it was great, you know, because they, they ran a little, Miami ran a janky zone, so it kind of threw us off offensively. Uh, and the sick part about it is they ran it the whole game. You usually don't see that the whole game. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of threw us off, but for us to stay engaged and, and just continue to fight it and, uh, and just continue to push, 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 even though you know, we were down 10 and was looking ugly for a minute, we just stayed engaged, we stayed locked in uh, and fought through the adverse time. So mental toughness in this aspect was, was definitely great to see, uh, but we, we still got to be better, man. We can't, we can't do that against a team who doesn't have the majority of their, their, their guys out there. And Gil was talking to us beforehand. You just talked about your relationship with him here tonight. Just you talk about how special that was to see him out there. It was great. You know, I always grew up watching Gil. He was a huge fan of him. 
just his approach to the game, his killer instinct mentality. Uh, you know, so it was a pleasure to be in his presence tonight. Uh, he, Karan, we always see Karan four times a year in Miami, so it's always good to see him too and to see him celebrated properly back in DC. And Twan, we have in our front office, we see him all the time too. So it's good to be able to embrace all those guys. Gil, playing my position, you know, somebody I always admired. Um, and just his work ethic and his approach to the game was just admirable, you know. So it was, it was good to be able to see them get their flowers tonight. Brad, on that final uh, offensive possession in regulation when you hit Kuz with the pass, that was about a 40-foot skip pass. At what point did you see Kuz open up and like what, what was going through your head when you, before you made that pass? Uh, the biggest thing is I wanted somebody to move because we were kind of stagnant on the floor. There's like five guys on the perimeter. Uh, and it's tough on the zone because guys are guarding spaces. They're not guarding the man. Um, and so literally I seen Kyle splitting between Corey and Kuz. I, didn't, I know he didn't see Kuz. Kuz ran the baseline last minute. He um, was just sitting in the corner. And my mindset was either I was going to jack this thing up from where I was standing or I was just going to make a simple play and get Kuz. And uh, I actually kept telling I was a little low-key tired too. So uh, I was just happy that Kuz was open. I hit him. Uh, Caleb thought I was throwing it to, I think, Corey. So it was, it was just a good pass. I'm happy he made it. Uh, it was a big shot for us. Brad, you were, you were defending Lowry there on a bunch of key possessions, I think, down the stretch, at least of regulation. Um, how much do you enjoy the, the times when when the team's got to get a stop, it goes through you? I'll take pride in it. Um, a lot of the times it's me just offering up my services to do it. Um, but I take pride in it, man. It's, it's a part of my job. It's a part of what, you know, coach asks of me sometimes. Um, and I gotta go out there and do it. You know, we, we have a lot of guys who can defend, and who do really well. It's tough, I gotta start talking to the refs because I think they got something against my man, Denny. I keep trying to file him out every game. But uh, just to be able to be <clears throat> locked in and, you know, embrace those moments. You know, I live for those, you know, whether it's offensively making a shot or defensively getting a stop. You know, I I, I enjoy that a lot. You know, I kind of kicked myself in the ass a little bit for last game. Um, but tonight I had to make sure that I was going to be on that guy. Brad, I believe you played all of the second half and over time, I guess, one, how are you feeling after that, during it? And then two, is that something that you tell Wes that, hey, I'm playing every single minute here on out? Uh, it's a mutual decision. Um, you know, he kind of looks at me and asks if I'm good. And I, yeah, not my head, I'm told him I'm good if I'm not. I asked for so, but I knew the way the game was going, I, I didn't want to come out. And, uh, he trusts me enough to be able to tell him when I need when me to sub. And he has timeouts too that, you know, are beneficial to us and gives me Give me a little time to rest too, but uh, you know, it's definitely neutral. I was a little tired. I don't, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, um, but I was able to push through. It's a mental toughness thing. I have great teammates who uplift me and make plays too, to where I don't have to do everything. And uh, it was great, man. It's just good to be able to be in that moment, uh, to be able to rally back and come back and win the way to do it. I know you don't want to tell us a lot, but could you elaborate a little bit on how Wes was able to fire you guys up at halftime? <laughs> Not a lot, like you said, but you know, it was, I mean, more or less more on the lines. Like we knew we weren't competing and playing the way we knew we were capable of playing. You know, he, was, he, had, he has high standards for us. He critiques everybody, he critiqued me. Hell, I was a couple plays I didn't run back on defense. And, uh, transition defense was kicking our butt in the first half. So he goes everybody accountable. Uh, you know, I think that's what I love. I definitely love about him, you know, so. He, he dropped a few F bombs in there, but you know, we, we definitely just got to be. He got our attention and we, he got a, a good reaction and response out of his team. Well, you said the zone that Miami ran was janky. Uh, what, That's what made just it a little slang I used, but yeah. Yeah, what made it different than like your normal 2 3? Uh, I mean, it was it was tough. One moment they looked like they were in 2 3, one moment they were in 1 3 1, 1 2 2. Like they were really mixing up their zone looks, kind of a matchup zone. Like it, they were. They did a good job of kind of switching up the look, but for the most part, they were in zone. Uh, but, I mean, a testament to them for, for sticking with it and making it work, kind of making it tough on us. Because if it's the NBA, it's tough to play a zone the whole game. Uh, but they did it, they managed to do it. And they did it at a high level. You know, we have to be better at making more plays, 
um, driving gaps, tinker ball, especially when I had tinker ball. Given that you and your teammates are grown adults, how often can an NBA coach light into a team at a halftime and, and have it still feel authentic and valuable? Actually, uh, light a fire under you guys. The biggest thing is like, is like what you said, the authenticity of it. Like players know. And so I think that's that's where it comes in with us being grown men. Uh, at the end of the day, they're still a leader. You know, coach is the ultimate leader of the team. You know, if we don't respect him, we don't value what his voice is, we're not going to be successful. We're not going to move forward, you know. Um, and the fact that he actually puts his, puts, makes sure his voice is heard and he's not afraid to shy away from confrontation. He's not confrontational, but he, he holds everybody to a standard. He's not afraid to critique you. Um, I think that's what makes us who we are. You know, I think that's only going to continue to propel us to be better. So we, we need that, you know, we're all, yeah, we are grown, grown ass men, but we need a little kick in the butt too sometimes, you know, so we're always open to that. There's no man better than the next man. We all have the same accountability levels. First off, congratulations on the victory. And I just wanted to say, obviously it was a tightly contested game from start to finish. What do you think was the key to maintaining your consistency? Of course you had, you were just making shots consistently and despite the turnovers and everything going on, what do you think helped you keep your mind on the ball, so to speak? Uh, I'm always a, I'm always just aggressive and I think we are as a team, uh, especially just in the second half, we, we had to play the way we knew we were capable of playing. We were playing a little passive uh, and I know that's, that's a lot of that is going to be my job to be able to get us shots, get in the paint, find us looks, um, especially against the zone. You know, we, we have to be more aggressive in those in those instincts. But, you know, I'm a I'm a shooting guard. I'm a two guard. You know, my job is always to have a killer instinct mentality and a move the scoreboard. You know, so I don't get rattled with shots missed. I don't get rattled with turnovers. Hell, I don't remember anything that happens throughout the game until I look at this white sheet after the game. You know, so I'm always locked in. I'm engaged. Um, you know, and I play hard, so shit, there's gonna be turnovers, there's gonna be missed shots. Um, you know, but you know, we're doing it at a high level, we're playing hard and I'm always just confident. I'm confident in the ball, I'm confident in what I'm able to do with the ball and making plays. I like that. Thank you for your time and also again congrats on the win. Thank you, brother. Brad, um, with you being the franchise guy, it's people expect you to make those clutch shots, but what's it like for you to have a Kyle Kuzma who you know can do that too and you can do that? It was amazing. I mean, but I, I, if people would be mad as hell if I just stood there and shot a ball against a zone, a one-on-five zone with no movement. I, um, I could have very well did that, but that's not, to me, that's not good basketball. It's not the right play. It's not the right look. Kuz is the best look for us to get a good shot. You know, make or miss. doesn't matter who shoots it. If I shoot it, KP shoots it, Kuz shoots it. Obviously, I want to shoot it, but I play the way the defense is kind of dictating us. You know, I have two, three guys on me. I have a lot of guys in the paint, eyes on me. So I make the right read and make the right play and trust my teammates to make shots and who's different. Brett, how's your, your hand and wrist? It's okay. I, I kind of fell on a little bit. Uh, it was good. Thank you.